What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to have a look at, well, some lovely One Piece TCG news. There's been some One Piece TCG news, which has been slipping out, kind of getting out there in magazines and such. And it's time we had a little chat about it, including, and I do think this is very important, the first alternate arts Full art, secret rare, call it what you will. Leaders from OP08, which I personally think is pretty gosh darn important. And as you can see from the little watermark on the screen there, this has come from Sasasa underscore one. So, who do we got? Let's start off with Chopper. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. For some reason, they've gone and revealed the worst leaders. Like, I have made absolutely no secret of the fact that in OP08, Marco looks absolutely ridiculous. And I was kind of ready to appoint Marco as the, you know, best leader in the game. And then I saw Charlotte put in, and now I'm not even convinced that Marco is the best leader in the set. Which is kind of wild. So, yeah. It's, um, it's a little bit weird, frankly. They're amazing. Chopper... I don't think Chopper is the best in the set. And I'm sorry if that makes me seem mean or grumpy. I, I apologize. I just don't think Chopper's that good. And I don't think Chopper's terrible. Uh, what we got? We got activate main once per turn. You get to attach one Don to each of three of your Drum Kingdom or animal characters. And that is obviously quite good. Attaching three Don, so you use them, they're rested, then you attach them, yay, W to the Don, etc. That is obviously pretty good and has a bunch of potential. I am not saying Chopper seems like a bad leader. What I am saying, however, is that Chopper does not excite me like some of the others, but I can see why Chopper was one of the ones they revealed, because Chopper's adorable. But really what we're interested in here is the design of the old art leaders. Because of course, it changes set to set. So we need to kind of sit back for a second and go, all right, where are we now? Because over in OP01, we started with what we refer to as the manga heads. Zoom in on the heads, literally taken from the manga. And then they carry on in OP02. OP02, exactly the same deal. We're back with the manga heads. OPO3, we changed wildly to this, I don't know what to call it, paintery style. That's what I'm going with, which, we, incidentally, we haven't seen since. This was very much a one-off. In OPO4, we went to the leader standing there, crew behind them style, which has more recently come back. More on that in a moment. OPO5, we actually went back to manga heads, and these were full-on manga heads. Again, artwork taken from the manga. OP06 was a weird one because we kind of have manga heads. They are kind of manga heads, but they're not manga heads. They are clearly extremely similar in style, except they are not taken from the manga. You know, I see Perona here is drawn by Ryuda. They are very similar, but instead of being taken from the manga, they are new artwork, which is kind of interesting, honestly. But then EB01 came around and we went back to the OP04 style. But they did give us a Kiros to match our Rebecca, which I actually really appreciate because together I think they make a lovely pair of cards. But yeah, after skipping that style for OP05 and OP06, they went back there for EB01, which was frankly a little bit weird, but not unwelcome. And then OP07, which we've not seen in English, so I'm going to have to show you the Japanese scan here. OP07, we stuck with that. We stayed with the OP04 EB01 style. Okay, fine. That's all right by me. But then we end up with OP08. And they're a bit weird. There are clearly some similarities here with your OP06 leaders and the manga heads that came before them because they've got the whole kind of map background thing going on. But they're not the same. These are a new kind of style. Now, there are very big similarities with OP06. But I'm not sure how similar they are. No, they are kind of OP06 style. I'll show you Carrot in a minute. I'm looking at Chopper, and Chopper seems a bit different. I think they probably are OP06 style. 
I think that's probably the best way to put them. Because they're new art. They're on the background, which is, you know, the map and all the standard background. So I think that's probably... I think OP06, they are essentially the same as that. Now, it gets weird because... Now, one of the things the artists started doing on Twitter, which I really appreciate, incidentally, they started putting out the art of the card. They literally started going, hey, does anyone want to see the full art of these cards? And incidentally, yes. Yes, I do. So if we look at the Perona leader next to the art of the Perona leader, we can actually see here that they, they didn't draw the face. They drew a picture of Perona, and then essentially it got zoomed in on. And if they'd used a bit less of a zoomed in face, it would look a lot more like the chopper. So now I think we're back to OP06 here. It just looks a little bit weird. So if I show you the carrot as well, this one looks a bit more OPO6 style. I tell you what, the chopper having the whole body in the frame, because chopper's short, is what confused me. I think if we look at the carrot here, yeah, we are very much looking at OPO6. And it is a little bit weird, because OPO7 went back to the OPO4 style, and then OPO8 goes back to OPO6. There doesn't seem to be any pattern going on here, but that's all right. Uh, Carrot, again, not my favourite leader from the set. Not saying it's bad. Just not my favourite leader from the set. We've got Activate Main once per turn. If you've got a Minx character on the board, then you get to rest one of your opponent's cost five or lower characters. It's fine. I don't think it's stunning. Just like I don't think Chopper is stunning. I think there are two leaders in this set that are like proper job. Full on ridiculous. I don't think it's either of these. But it's still cool and we get to see the artwork and we know that we're going back to the OPO6 style, which I for one appreciate. And you know what? Yeah, this is pretty gosh darn cool. But there is also one new car that we need to have a little bit of a look at from Starter Deck 14. And I don't know if this is the last card from Starter Deck 14. I need to sit down and make a little bit of a list and see if we've actually seen them all. But I know we are at least getting very, very close. And it could actually be the last one. And it's Monkey to Luffy. And it's really good. And there's a gigantic caveat. So what we got from Monkey to Luffy here is 8 cost, 10,000 power, no counter. Once again, if you've read the manga, what's the anime, if you know what Luffy was doing during the time skip... And this happens a lot with Starter Deck 14 art, which I really appreciate. If you know what Luffy was doing during the time skip, you're going to look at this artwork here and be like, oh, I get it. That's kind of cool. And I really like that. Like, there's so many of these cards that are just great pictures showing what happened during the time skip. And I, for one, very much appreciate that. Here's the thing, though. If you've got a 10 cost character on the board, this gets Rush. 8 cost, 10,000 power rush. Now, as a side note, it does actually say 10 cost or higher character. Remember, you only get 10 Don. You cannot have a character which is naturally more than 10 cost unless they bring in some kind of mechanic to give you extra Don or bring the cost down before you play it because you literally only have 10 Don. But obviously, you could take a 10 cost character and your leader Luffy makes it an 11 cost character. If it's a straw hat, then the Sunny makes it a 12 cost character. We've got Heracles and Heredus, which can up the cost by two as well. So there are plenty of ways now to up the cost. So whereas it used to be that 10 was a pretty hard cap, this new thing going on basically lets us break that cap and have more expensive cards. Which, just as a side note here, does not mean we're getting a character that costs more than 10. Because as I've just explained, you have 10 Don. That would make no sense. But a 10,000 power character with Rush. Oh my word, that could be a lot of fun. And it's not like we've never seen powerful cards with Rush before, yeah? We do have some very good characters that have Rush. And we've got an 11,000 power Luffy that's got Rush. So this is not even the most powerful rushing Luffy. But I'm telling you right now, a black character with 10k Rush 
Oh, that is something you don't see every day. In terms of naturally black characters, i.e. not one to have been given rushed by some other form, yeah, th th this is basically it in terms of the most powerful. And that is legit awesome. I love this. This is really good. Yeah, you got to have a 10 cost or higher character on the board in order for it to work, I grant you. But that's the whole point of this deck. And remember... Luffy is an 8 cost. So if you've just got the Sunny out and you're using Luffy as your leader, boom, that's it. That's your 10 cost right there. You play it, then you check to see if you've got a 10 cost. Oh, this is a 10 cost. Jobs are good un. Because remember, it doesn't say other character. It just says character. So you should be good to go here. I like this. Sure, you're going to have to wait a couple of turns to have the Dawn in order to play it. I grant you, but I don't really care, honestly. Because it's a rush character with 10k, that seems fine by me. Right, there we go. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me which of these cards you're excited about. Tell me what you think of the new leaders. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.